Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm in a bit of a dilemma because I'm not sure if the Royal Enfield is going to stay or going to go. Cue the intro. So for the last few weeks I've generally been thinking is it time for a change for the channel but I've not even really had the Royal Enfield Himalayan for a year and the thing of it is is I wanted to keep it for a year so I could do an entire year some adventures on it be able to put out my yearly review before we change the bike anyway but I have been the last few weeks going is it time for a change now there's a few niggles about this bike that's actually been starting to bug me quite a bit and it might just be my bike it could be many of them so I've literally spent the last few days behind the scenes doing maintenance on the bikes, cleaning them, oiling like the chains, adjusting them, all the boring stuff. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go out on this bike and see if I fix one of my biggest niggles so far. And I'm also testing something else out to see if I can fix that niggle. But I don't generally think that should be a thing for a bike a year old. I shouldn't be having niggles that I generally find really, really annoying. So one of the little niggles that's been bugging me, and it's been bugging me now for about five months, because it's been getting worse and worse, is that there's been a vibration coming from the bike. So when I'm revving it along, I'm sort of trying to cover some miles, I'm getting a lot of sort of vibration noise, and it's just one of those things that keeps niggling away at you going, what is it, what is it? So I literally sat there in my garage revving the pants off this bike to try and find it. And after checking loads of different stuff, the one thing I realised was, I believe, it was coming from the headlight itself. So I had to sort of do a little bit of a fix on, a, again, a bike that's not even a year old to try to get rid of it. And partly what I'm out today is to find if what I've done has actually fixed it. So what I think the vibration noise that's really annoying me is, there's two little screws that hold on each side of this, right? Just there and just there. But all that's really holding this on other than those two is like a little bit of a metal kind of lip that goes underneath the light here now when i was revving up when i put my ear to it i could hear a lot of vibration coming from this so what i've done is i've whipped this off and i've literally put some duct tape around the metal bracket to try to stop that vibration noise and i'm hoping that's going to fix it and the other niggle that i've got is the seat now i know you can buy touring seat people have pointed this out before but when i bought the bike i wanted it standard for a reason so i wanted to know what you got for your money now the thing of it is i've already reviewed a seat cushion that i've bought before that are these like sort of knobbly bits and it was great it sort of worked it got rid of the pains that i was getting in my bum around my calves and stuff like this after about a 50 mile ride but then i found it quite uncomfortable because it was so knobbly and knobbly bits against your bum isn't for me so what I've done now is, is I've tried a new seat cover and let me show you and explain why this might be better. So the point of this seat cushion is, is it's got like thousands of little gel balls in. So it should give me that feeling of sitting on a bean bag and kind of take away the lip that I'm finding around here that's I'm really struggling with, like I said, after some miles on this bike. And I'm hoping that this fix, and you can get these for about sort of 20 quid, I'm hoping this fix is gonna do it. But until I give it a good go over, I don't know yet. So this is partly why I'm out today as well. Now I appreciate they are just little minor things and hopefully I've fixed one and hopefully I've fixed the other and I'll just fall in love with the bike again because it's an awesome bike and I've proved it time and time again what it's capable of. It's not, I'm not saying don't buy a Himalayan at all. What I'm saying is, is that for me, it's almost like uh, this bike is a bike that I'm going to change on a regular basis and I'm thinking of changing it early because of those couple of little bits but there's more to it than that and i'll explain as we're going down the road and some stuff that's going on with the channel as well but i don't know i'm really 50 50 so let's get on the road let's get some miles under a belt and let's just chat about this bike and some of the stuff that's coming up on the channel so what i want to just see first of all with the bikes if i've got this that, that niggle that vibration noise because i can't explain enough how much it's been annoying me because it's been getting worse and anytime you're on some kind of decent trip, anything around sort of now, four and a half thousand rest, five thousand rest, there was a vibration noise. It just annoyed the pants off you. Imagine a bee buzzing. It's like duh, 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 duh. right. Step up a little bit more. Five thousand revs. I'm staying in this gear on purpose. And there is a little vibration noise, a very, very little, but not. No, it's not there. That vibration noise. It's gone. Oh, that's a massive difference, a massive difference. So it looks like if you've got that noise, that vibration, you're thinking, what is it? Is your headlight cluster. Undo those two screws, the little metal kind of clip that clips in at the top, a couple of duct tape around it, put it back in, and it is so much better. It's 
it's gone. The actual lap noise is gone. Yeah. Well, that's made me feel a lot, lot better. A lot, 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 lot better. And then of course, the second niggle is about the seat now. Again, I've not gone as far on this one cushion because it is literally, everything's just been done. It was raining um, sort of midday, so now in the afternoon, this is what I'm just out literally for a test ride. And just going through some of my thoughts with you guys as well, because, you know, you create videos all the time and I'm very focused on what I'm making and where we're pushing the channel to. I don't often just come out and ride and chat about some of the things that I'm feeling about to do with the bikes and stuff like that. I normally save stuff for a review, try and do it in a formatted way, but this is bare bones really. So the seat cushion, like I said, the one I had before, it's got like the little knobbly bits on it and it was felt like you're being knobbled on the bum. And, it, and in the beginning I was like, oh, do you know what, that's so much better than the lip sort of feeling I was feeling around my ass. Well, it was digging in and pain, painfully fixed that. But what I found with that was that I generally thought it was a little bit uncomfortable on a long, long run. So when I saw this, I was like, okay, this has got loads of little beads in it. That idea of kind of sitting down on a bean bag could be ideal. Now, I feel a little pressure on the left and right on my bum cheek, and we're not gone far. So this will sort of pan out as the video goes out. But you wouldn't know, currently sat on this, that I'm sat on any kind of seat cushion and I kind of wanted that as well I didn't want a seat cushion I sat and I went I know I'm on a cushion I want it to feel like the natural seat because when I ride I like to feel sort of one with the bike I like it to be an extension of me and that's the reason why I can ride around doing lots of things that I do like holding out selfie sticks and standing up and doing some of the crazy stunts and things that I do because I do I feel like when I'm riding a bike I feel like I can let go of the handlebars and I can hold my hands out and I could steer and I do do I can steer just with leaning and I know where the bike's going to go because no matter when anybody goes put both hands on the on the handlebars your bike if you let go of the handlebars it will go in a true straight line and that's kind of the difference is that and if you slightly lean your bike will slightly lean we obviously don't go around a major bend like a nutter trying to do it no handed I wouldn't recommend that and I don't recommend letting go of the handlebars but I'm just saying for me it feels like an extension of myself and that's what I love about biking so yeah there's that little bit of rant over anyway that noise has gone it's so much nicer without that noise and the other thing about the uh, Himalayan as well because like I said I've been doing maintenance in the garage and it's all the boring stuff and this is the reason why I don't just I don't film me just cleaning bikes I've, 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 I've told people how I do it before that saves loads of time and obviously I've got a selection of bikes on this channel and they all needed to clean so that's what I did I basically spent some time cleaning, adjusting chains, and that's the one thing about the Himalayan as well, was is that it's done probably about right to be fair, two, 2,000, nearly 2,200 miles, and the chain wasn't loose loose, but it needed adjusting, so all the little maintenance bit that should give it a little bit of a nicer ride as well. A perfectly adjusted chain to manufacturer's specifications can make a big difference to the ride as well. Anyway, I'm almost out of fuel, so I'm going to grab some fuel and then we're going to talk about a few more bits to do with the bike and a few sort of decisions and things that are running through my head at the minute and then you guys can leave in the comments what you think about them. Now, the one thing about this bike as well, so this is the other thing. Now, I know I'm just sounding like I'm slagging off, but I actually really, really like this bike and this is why I'm really torn about what I'm going to do because there's loads of plus sides. So before I talk about a couple more of the issues and negatives and what I feel could potentially happen. Now, this on the side of the plus side is as an all rounder. And as I've said before, is absolutely fantastic. If I want to go off road, this bike fills me with confidence for a little bit of green lane in. If I want to like tractor around and have a bike that feels old to light. So if, for instance, if I dropped it off road or for instance, I pulled up on a bit of gravel and I fell off this bike, I'd have literally no issues with just picking this bike up. There is no problem with that whatsoever at all. And that's one of the things I love about this bike. It's light, it's simple, it's easy. And it's kind of old school. When it comes down to the engine, the way that it all works, it just feels old school, reliable, tractors along. And it's just a great bike. So I want to really make that clear. This is not a bashing match for this bike whatsoever at all because I am really 50-50 with the point of keeping it because it is so great. But then there's the other side of it right now. So behind the scenes, obviously on the channel, that there's a potential that the uh, sidekick, for instance, might be looking at buying himself a GS1200. Obviously a big thumper of a bike, a tractor, a mile muncher. 
and that kind of slightly changes the dynamics of the channel now i could if i so wanted to keep a bike i've already got the st 1100 because it you know it's probably worth around a thousand to a grand and a half in price but the thing about the ST is that's a bike that's going to have to go because I bought it to do a charity trip on, it's done what it needs to do, I need to move on with the next project for the channel. So that has to go. So the other side of this is, is this keeping up with a GS or something if we're going to pack some miles, like we're going to be potentially going to Germany. I can go to Germany back on this, 100% easy, but if I'm going to be trying to keep up with the Psychic on the GS, I will be revving the pants and struggling to do so. Not just that as well, but I'm hoping in the future, in the not so distant future, to actually add another character into the channel who's going to be going pillion with me quite a lot. Now, even with that as well, they're not the most happy about being on this as a pillion. And obviously, a good engine, but with the lack of horsepower, it's probably not going to be as great a bike to up to do some trips and trips on so currently in the helmet head garage we have what is off the road and it's sat in the corner because for me it's just a pure emotional memory bike from a trip that we did but we obviously have the original honda vision scooter we have the honda monkey bike that is just a massive feature on this channel so we're about to do on the monkey bike the mali mile and it's basically where we go and we ride around a castle and we race and the psychic's got a vespa and we'll be doing lots of racing and there's loads of cool stuff going on with that as well and the monkey bike in regards to power between that and this tanking it open there's probably not all that much in it they're pretty similar in regards to actual real go because the monkey bike is so little it kind of accelerates similar to this so i've kind of got a low powered but awesome bike already is what i'm trying to say but just going back to the monkey bike so the so when we go and do these races i'm creating the helmet head race team because now we you know we're officially racing we're gonna have race decors on the bike the lot and i've already created one of the things i've been doing on the few days i've not been filming and sorting bikes and stuff out sorting out a, a new line of merch and i can't wait because i'll reveal it properly once once it actually arrives but i'm going to have the helmet head race team official race t-shirt and for the very executive type of course the very posh type i'm going to have a very very it's expensive but trust me it's cool a very very awesome helmet head race team polo shirt that's embroidered and it's just going to look awesome at least i'm hoping it is until when i get the until i get the product and it arrives and i check it out to make sure i'm happy with it but it, all the time and effort i've put into making that happen it should look like some of the best merch that i've ever put out and i'm hoping that we're going to get a few people that are watching these races wearing the helmet head race team merchandise because it might be the whole start of a series about potentially doing some racing as well and years and years ago i used to race so it'd be quite good to get back into it but we'll see we'll see how this pans out so we're taking the monkey bike we're currently going through race prep with them there's loads of stuff going on with that as well and obviously the vest for the same to be able to race the mali mile so i'm dead excited about that so anyway back to the himalayan so this is partly my dilemma that i want i kind of want and i feel like i need a bigger bike now one of the bikes that has been massively striking out to me is something that i can use off-road do some big miles on do some awesome stuff is the scrambler the triumph scrambler now i've got a massive massive passion for triumph everybody knows that one of my dream bikes was the bonneville i owned one of them i want another one now i want to kind of something like that that i can do everything on and obviously the scrambler is that and especially now we've got the 1200 out because the 1200 it's just dream world isn't it it's going to have all the power that i want to do big trips potentially have a side pannier on it etc as well so i can get my luggage on it the person that's going to be joining me that will be revealed in the future hopefully on some of my trips and some of my sort of little kind of we're going to do some 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 sort of classic -y style british stuff as well bike wise they should be happy with it as a pillion as well so it's crying to me at the minute now another bike that's crying to me as well what people are going to love and hate all at the same time because i know how much these bikes are loved and hate is i recently did a review on a harley davidson harley's been in the back of my mind for a long long time and i'm really kind of tempted to go down that route but then on the other side with the channel as well 
is that I really want to push, and this might be a winter thing, but I really want to push traveling the world by motorcycle bit by bit. And we've already obviously done a video, if you've not seen that, where we've been off to French, France, French, France, and the Pyrenees and into Spain. We've already started that, and I want to continue that with more country, some more places. The more wackier, the better. So I'm currently looking into that. So you can imagine all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. And there's a picture grows, you can kind of see, does the Himalayan fit in it? That's the thing. Does it fit in it? Or is this a bike that I think, do you know what? No, keep it, get to your year, reassess it then, or ride this bike for another year. Or the other side I'm tempted to do on it is take it on a full-on adventure. Now, obviously I've done adventures on it and it goes in the back of the camp and it goes off, but take it on a more drooling adventure. Put it through something that's whoa quite tough put it through something sorry she was about to pull out on me and kill me but anyway we'll move on from that um so put it through something that's quite tough and something that's going to be knackering for me and i've done it pre previously and how see how the bike holds up i don't know you know when it's just you don't know i don't know i just don't know <laughs> I'm coming through all these pluses and minuses with weirdly what I want to do and where I want the channel to be as well. So if I go abroad, going back to that, if I go abroad and do some of the abroad stuff that I want, that basically will mean a lot of stuff will be for me flying out to uh, like crazy countries, hiring inappropriate style bikes or what I can get my hands on and riding some absolutely crazy stuff and like I mentioned before in a live chat Thailand's massively on my list India's on my list literally everywhere's on my list but you know what I mean like pushing us to some countries and doing some things that not everybody would do because it's kind of where I want to start pushing the channel put myself through some real tests and trials on a bike as well so with all that happening it's almost like do I sell this and start funding that I don't know. I just, I'm so torn. Because I actually really like this, but now I've got rid of that vibration. Oh, it's just mwah. Just mwah. So I'm all over the place. As you can tell and as you can hear, I am pretty much all over the place with what I want to do and, what I, and where I go. There's a potential to take this bike coming up where I ride it from England all the way around the coastline of France and head back to the Pyrenees just for a, a flyby visit, not to do a tour of the Pyrenees, but do the French coastline. And potentially this bike would be fantastic to do that on. I mean, this is a go anywhere, do anything bike. I know that, but it's the point in my head of one, it's the power. I want more power. I feel like I'm lacking a bit of power. I want more power. And I want to be able to have a pillion on the back and have that power to be able to go. I want to do some bigger adventures and some bigger distances, but I want a bike that can sit there and hold that kind of 80, 90 miles an hour all day long without it killing the engine. And I'm missing, I'm missing that classic bike, that, like I said, Triumph Scrambler, potential Harley Davidson. I'm missing that. I'm, it's, a, it's a hard place. It's a good place, but a hard place to be. I don't know. I just don't know. So also, a few other things that's going on behind the scenes on the channel. So obviously we're going to do this race, and obviously if anyone's seen the channel, I hope you all have, you'll know that I'm on my third version of what I call the uh, Monkey Cycle Camper Van, where basically I have bought like a mini burst, this time it was an ex-ambulance, and it's basically into a camper van where I can put my bike in the back and go off and do adventures and use that as like a base now that is coming with me obviously part of my race sort of setup is i'm going to obviously be staying in my camper van like a proper lord in luxury now when i bought my camper van what we we discovered we got told it's got all new suspension and stuff on it we discovered the long short story of it is, is that they've bodged the suspension on the back where they've taken out air suspension and just put springs in and not done a proper job of it so that is actually due mot so coming up I was kind of almost a bit of a race because we're massively against time with pre-book stuff going on and filming going on to get the van ready. So coming up is, is a whole series on, you know, getting the van ready, getting the bikes prepped for the trip because obviously we're building up to this massive amount of racing. So a massive amount of money is now being literally ploughed into getting the camper van ready as well. So kind of again behind the scenes on the channel, there is a lot 
of stuff going on. Absolutely insanely a lot going on on the channel. To try and get everything fitted in. <sighs> so yeah, I don't know. I'm just glad this vibration noise has gone. Such a nice vibe. No slackness from that chain, just oh, instantly off the throttle. It feels good. So this is the thing. I am generally torn. I just don't know exactly what to do. I don't know if I'm going to keep the Himalayan or the Hala Halamium, Helium, Halium, Halium. I don't know if I'm going to keep the Himalayan or the Himalayan, whichever you want to call it. But I don't know. I just don't know. Like I said, I'm craving something else. I always say to myself, give it a little bit longer. I'd love to keep this and add something else to it, but I'm just not there with all the other stuff going on to keep everything going the way that I do. I can't just stop for six months while I try and figure out how I'm going to afford to add another bike. I'm just torn. And the thing of it is, is that it is a great bike and I feel like I'm just riding, slagging it off, but I like it. I love the way it handles. I love its capability. I do see it as a go around the world bike, but I just don't know if I want to keep it, it's just tough. Anyway, I've come to one of my favorite places just to chill out and have a good think. So I'm just gonna share that with you for a minute. I'm gonna have a good think about things before we hit the road, but I don't know. Let's have a think about it. What do I believe? What makes me feel it? To write you this song Two hours a day Five months and a year Oh, I loved you too long Well, I've been here for about half an hour flying the drone, staring at the bike staring at the countryside and I keep looking at the bike and I keep seeing a Triumph Scrambler brand spanking new 1200 sat there and that's the problem but then I also look at it and I see myself bags and all heading off into the sunset on that on an adventure because I like the look of that and I kind of want both <laughs> I don't know I just still don't know so I'm gonna ride I'm gonna have a bit more of a feel for the bike but do I keep it for longer and then next year replace it with the Scrambler? Or do I follow my heart, sell it now and get the bike that I want? What's the best thing to do? As a creator, it's about buying the bike that you know is going to do well on the channel. More than literally following your heart. And it really is a lot of the time. And I know the Himalayan's a great bike for the channel and I know it's been absolutely awesome. But am I still in love with it? Or have I even ever fallen in love with it? Or is it just a great bike that I enjoy riding? So many decisions. Live a little, flip the page, give it some more, getting out of my way. I was hiding. Bulletproof, forever waiting. Then came you. I thought I was what I've been told. I thought I was. I thought I was what I've been told. I thought I was. I was picking up the pieces of yesteryear's life. In over my head, trying to figure out I was going through changes, but where to begin When a mountain moving revelation came marching in I thought I was what I've been told I thought I was I thought I was what I've been told I thought I was
So here's the thing. I'm riding the Himalayan now for probably around another hour. I don't feel too numb on the seat. That's fantastic if this cushion actually does work. It's not vibrating like it used to. It's not as annoying. And I've discovered the smiles it gives me, that joy of just poodling along at sort of 55, 60 and enjoying it. But I don't know. I generally, I don't know. I am so torn at the minute about what to do. And I know I've got so much big stuff coming on. I know I've got the monkey bike and I'll be racing it. And I've got the van to get right and sorted. It needs to go for its MOT. And there's some big adventures on the horizon. Some amazing stuff happening on this channel. Potentially, maybe I should speak to Triumph and get the Scrambler for a week and take it on an adventure and see if I fall in love in love with it. But I just don't know. I really don't know. So right now, it's about to absolutely pee it down. I'm gonna get myself home. I'm gonna pour myself a beer. And I'm gonna have a think about it. Yeah.